Hello, what's up everybody? How you guys doing? We got Neath here up against Ho Yi. Generally pretty bad matchup, but I don't know, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the turnaround. We're 3-4 right now. We've been playing, you know, just pretty much any god we we like. Um, and that's that's always a really rough game in duel because you're, you know, you're bringing stuff that's unviable into what's pretty much always going to be viable picks because most of your opponents, you know, they want to they want to win. They they're going for viable stuff. And I want to win too. But I just want to be able to do it with, you know, whatever the fuck I like. <laughs> so that's kind of the boat that I'm always in. He went for Hunter's Blessing. I went for uh, Mage's Blessing here. He didn't go for the Chalice. This is an option you can do that a lot of people have been favoring. Or not favoring. A lot of people have been uh, looking at. Uh, I don't know what the general consensus has been. But there's between the Hunter's Blessing and a Chalice, and Hunter's Blessing and no Chalice with, with three pots of each kind. Because that's a very strong build right there. But you don't get Chalice, and Chalices are so strong. So I'm not too sure if it's worth giving up. He's definitely not clearing as well as we are, especially with our Mage's Blessing. Oh my god, I really psyched myself out there. They were good jukes. Alright, at least we hit every auto. But yeah, they were good jukes, and I, um, I just completely overthought it we had the position like that on him and it didn't really i didn't need any finesse just go for them they just blessing might be enough here oh he shelled too early but he's healing first oh my god it didn't even matter I'm gonna say Mage's Blessing had to have an effect there. It must be. Okay, let's get... We're going to regular, regular old boots since we're playing. The reason we're going for Mage's Blessing again is because I'm beneath, who is more primarily a um, burst hunter. There aren't that many burst hunters, um, and almost none of them are viable, beneath included. Because they fall off very hard in the late game when it comes to auto attack trades. But in the. Oh my god, I almost just died. <laughs> but in the early game, you can. Um, yeah, just having some burpees. Yeah, some. Do you know that burpees is a workout exercise? I'd never heard of it until. Um, I think it was Master of None. Uh, but yeah, so in the early game, you can really try to make that Hunter shine as an ability-based god more than anything. But I still don't go ability-based build for her uh, past the initial part. I'd rather go for um, Demonic and just go for the, or not sorry, the Devourers. Go for the standard Hunter build, because uh, going into the late game, that burst is going to fall off, and that's the whole point of it being an early game asset and not a late game asset. So you want to build towards your late game with her in most cases. Sometimes I'll just rush um, some auto attack and not even go for the uh, Devourer's Gloves if I think that she's like so heavily outmatched like against some of the warriors that she's just, just getting steamrolled. But for the most part, I like playing up on her early game, but uh, playing towards her, uh, her late game. In the builds. All right, so let's win this game. I just want to have some it's gonna go straight into the death gloves. So yeah, for his start, um, the reason that he's going the tier one boots and everything is he doesn't want to have that gold left over. And he, it's true for a level three start, you don't really want to have that much gold left over. But you're not using the 300 like the boot one doesn't do anything for you and that 300 or 350 is still in your pocket so that's only 150 off from the boot one anyway i just don't think actually buying the boot one does enough for you to warrant not going a chalice plus some pots uh monopods or you can go multipods too both off our auto group all right that's right yep <laughs> he did not expect I'd run this way. 
keeping him on his keeping him on his toes, maybe. Oh shit, not enough! Where's the blue stone at when you need it? You have oh. Oh. oh! Wow, I can't believe he hit the jump but he didn't find the follow up. He, I know he didn't have his one, but I'm surprised he didn't try for the autos. I think he just got really scared. He almost had that. I didn't think he was gonna stand there for me to use my one on him, so I didn't like actually aim it at him. I just threw it to try to get him to jump uh, while we were in wave there. And he just didn't jump. If I aimed it, I would've killed him. Kinda mad I didn't just aim that and try to get him. Uh -oh. Wow, see, look at my burst, man. It's so fun being able to put out those numbers with Neath, and it's just so... Disappointing when it like you know starts to crumble and it's no longer as relevant when they get some defense online. The DPS from the auto attack builds just starts building up. Ha! <laughs> Your middle tower is under attack. But yeah, she's not that unviable. Like you know, she can still get shit done. She's not the worst hunter. I think the worst hunter is probably Spanke. She's around where, like, Chiron is. They just changed something with her, like her hope or something. That happened. I guess a lot of damage, but I'm okay. Don't worry. Target locked. That's right. You better back up. That always makes people back up. If it doesn't, do it. are a second time. That's how. You, that's the test. Put him in front of a Neethal within range of the one. If they don't back up. He's a second we go for shield of thorns here for sure. No, Cupid's good in duel. He's he's good. He's very underutilized, but he's a lot better than Neath is. He would shit on Neath. His matchup versus Neath is probably at least 65, to maybe 70, 30. Oh yeah, almost definitely 70, 30. There's no escape at all for his ultimate. Gonna do that to me point blank. Sometimes it's so hard to hit that too. Because it comes out so slowly. They have all the time in the world to get out of range. So I try to like creatively aim it. It's like, well. Still walk out of that thing. Really preemptive uh, ultimate there. Oh. He didn't go for it. He's had good jukes for sure. You know, players like this, when you have the early lead and you're on a lower tier god, you have to give them a lot of respect because, you know, I can tell this guy, he seems pretty good. You know, he's gonna probably be able to take it from me as soon as this gets to late game if I slip up at all. So I still have to play this as though I am behind and not fuck around at all, even though I have like an immense lead. Oh, thanks so much, Zaps. Hope it's a great season for you too.
Crusher Neath. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure about Crusher on Hunters. I do like it on um, on Assassins right now, as I always have. I forget, what was the old passive on it? Not the original Crusher when it had the tower shredding. I know they changed the pass for this season, but I forgot what the old one was. I am on He's doing a really good job of just prioritizing, keeping the wave cleared. Counted for my entire ult. Did not think that would be the case. There's a lingering um, effect of uh, backdoor protection removal on towers. After creeps are dead, it still stays there for a good like five seconds. So you should absolutely stay and poke the tower during that time. Oh shit, nice. Alright, alright. I knew he was going to go to the side, but... Uh, how far he'd get. See, the difference is that I'm hitting for 32 when there are no creeps, 64 when there are creeps. It's half. Alright, I'll go Crusher. Alright, I'll go Crusher. Gotta check it out for myself. It should work well with the ability damage, and then it gives her attack speed as well, so. Because now Crusher, if you weren't familiar, has a bleed on it. Um, or not really a bleed. Um, I guess it's just, it's like a blue stone. It, it just does extra damage uh, right after in a single tick. I think in a single tick? Or is it more than one tick? It might be more than one tick. I don't know where I got that from. Just making it up as I go along. But this is our first <laughs> comfortable game. After those four awful games of just so the tension, man. Nothing worse than those games you just feel like so bad. That's much you can do. I think Bastet is really good right now in Season 5. I said she would be really good in Season 3, and I think people just underutilize her. She was a lot better. More people used her. Oh no, it was Season 4. Uh, and now... Wait, are we in Season 4 or Season 5? Uh, what? It's Season 5. Yeah, it's Season 5. And nice, we set the trap and he fell in. GG. Fast that is going to be really good. Mark my words, you guys.